Welcome to an enlightened hour of interactive talk. This is Guided Spirit Conversations with host Marla Goldberg. In this program, we spotlight guests from all over the globe who have helped others change their lives and will provide you with the tips, tools, and techniques that you need to help you make a difference in your own life. Now, here is Marla Goldberg. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Guided Spirit Conversations. I'm your host, Marla Goldberg, and we are in for a really big treat today. My guest this week is Lisa Gennady, and I've been saying her name wrong. I've already apologized, but Lisa has dedicated her life to helping people grow and evolve on their spiritual paths. She leads retreats in the United States and around the world, bringing people to spiritual and sacred places to connect to a higher state of consciousness. As a channel and healer, she connects to the angelic realm, guides, and ascended masters to assist others on their path of growth and awakening. She is She offers a unique combination of automatic writing and Akashic record readings as a powerful combination for healing and growth. She has a line of inspirational product to assist people on their spiritual journey. Welcome, Lisa. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much, Marla, for uh, asking me to be on your show. Thank you for being here. So we corrected another thing I had said. You live in Illinois, but you're not um, originally from there. So I I'm a New Yorker through and through. <laughs> I saw the 847 and said, ah, a fellow kindred spirit. So, so you're also from New York or are you from Illinois? Illinois. Okay. What part? The people think I'm from, from New York. I'm from the city. I was okay. born and raised in the city. Perfect. And then as I'm with my marriages moved out to the suburbs. Okay. And now I split time between here and Wisconsin. So. Yeah. Let's talk about you, though. That's what we're here for. What was your catalyst? I know you were in corporate America, but you had to have something that triggered, you know, that springboarded you down your spiritual path. What was it? You know, I, you know, nothing happens instantly. I have a lot of clients who come to me and they say, I want to be intuitive. How do I be intuitive? It's Mm -hmm. hard work. It takes time. It takes clearing. It takes processing. And I never really was thinking I was going down that spiritual path. For me, I found it through yoga. I've been a practicing yoga teacher for 21 years. And um, through yoga, I basically became to understand more about how energy works, feeling different sensations in my body. Through practice, all of a sudden, I began to know things. It just sort of started happening subtly. And the big shift really took place when I stepped into Kundalini yoga. And I know you said on your uh, thing, what's Kundalini? You didn't know what that was. Oh, and, no. Um, what's, the, what's the RYT 500? But I know what oh, that is now. Yeah, that's, that's what yoga, I was talking about. That's Yoga Alliance Registered Yoga Teacher. So ERYT is just extended because I've been doing it for so long. Um, and I teach lots of different forms of yoga, Hatha yoga. But I teach something that I call energy yoga because everything I do now, I see beyond what's in front of you, you know. And so I incorporate um, energy and intuitive readings in my classes. I pull oracle cards and uh, it really gives us a lot of guidance, you know, to kind of help set the intention for the class. But um, one of the biggest, for me, catalysts to moving forward was playing the gong shifting my vibrational frequency through playing the gong, shifting my vibrational frequency through chanting a mantra called Japji, which Jap is, um, is repeat and G is soul. So when you're repeating this, it's basically repeating a sound current to activate your soul. And I had committed to chanting Japji. I said, you know what? I'm going to do this as a sadhana on January 1st. And on December 31st, when I went to just do a little writing in the morning, all of a sudden I got this big, long thing. It said, the flags will fly and guide the way a new day is dawning and all will be lost. And then I don't remember the rest of it, but I'm like, whoa, where'd that come from? Because it sure wasn't me. It didn't sound like me or anything. And it was when I made a commitment for bettering of myself, then the universe provided. Which it does. And when I said yes, the more I said yes, the more I received. But it's a big commitment because it's sort of like you realize that you're, what you're doing isn't necessarily for you anymore. It is for you, but when you shift your focus away from you and do it more as a global, more that comes in. Right. And 
it's so true and it is it's powerful and I, you know, I was I was talking to someone yesterday and, and it and I just wanted to bring up the fact that nothing happens overnight people come to us as healers mm -hmm. and say fix me but what they don't send not not I shouldn't say this is a broad this is a broad stroke this isn't specific but many people feel that they go to a healer and it's like fix me do me you know they don't realize it's the partnership that mm -hmm. the healer and the client have together to get the end result. Yes. And it's like what I talk to my, my clients about my life coaching clients is it's like, well, great. In this first session, we will get through a layer and you'll be like, Whoa, I have all these epiphanies and all this clearing and you feel great. And then you boom, you're going to walk and you're going to hit another wall. Right. And you have to clear that one. And it's just, you're slowly, slowly working to clear everything that's gone down in this lifetime. But with the lessons you're working on in this lifetime are what you brought in from past lifetimes. Yes. And that's where I use the Akashic Record readings to help, you know, to help people figure out, well, whoa, I'm claustrophobic because in a past life I died in a cave collapse, you know, right. and now I understand why I'm claustrophobic because I have no reason to be. So then that gives you the understanding so then you can move forward and clear it. Exactly. Oh. It's amazing. And when I found that epiphany out for myself, because I can't have anything tight around my neck. And me then too. I had a past life regression where I was hung. Yep. Me too. Where I was strangled. And it's not unusual. It's just mm -hmm. how we bring it into the lives to be cleared and our wounds to be healed so we can move forward. Totally. So let me ask you, you were on your, I was checking out your website. And it said that you offer both psychic and intuitive readings. How do you differentiate the difference between psychic readings and an intuitive reading? Um, you know, for me, I am a channel, so everything comes through channel. So what I tell people is I don't even know what I'm talking about when I tell it to you. I, and I'm a chat, I do automatic typing. So I do something called soul reflection reading. So I would take your name if I did a reading for you, Marla, and I would write it down. And I would ask spirit, what is it that you need to know to help you in this time and space? And then I begin feeling things in my physical body. So if it's in my, if I start, you know, clearing my throat, you're having fifth chakra issues, meaning you're having difficulty speaking your truth. I use my left arm as sort of a Geiger counter and I can tell by where I feel things on my body, where, what age you were, that is the issue you're working through. So like if I'm on my wrist, it's three from three to fingertips, that's younger than three. My elbow is 20 and my shoulder is current lifetime. So then I do the math so I can tell you what happened when you were 20 and something came up yesterday for somebody and she goes, well, nothing. And then she's like, oh my God, this. And then it led into the whole conversation. And then from there I channel type and you get a paragraph, you get to keep it, um, read it again. It's all channeled wisdom and every line is a mini reading. You can read it out of order and it still makes sense. Um, and that like really, really assists people. I don't like to future because the future can be changed. There's multi different pathways that we can take. Yeah. So if I tell you something, it could be shifted just by me telling it to you and you can make something be which shouldn't be you know, and right. I don't like to use the word should. So I don't like to tell people their future and the way my guides work activation and it smooths over it all. Because what happens is when you bring this stuff up to the surface, yes. you can't clear it until it's brought up. It stays suppressed and stagnant. So we need to sort of stir the pot, which sometimes can be a little uncomfortable. It's work to right. grow as a human being is work. And so you stir the pot, so it can then be cleared. And that's how the light code activation helps to smooth that over until the next time. Exactly. I don't know why the vision of chicken soup came up. And anybody who's made chicken soup knows that when the chicken, the water starts boiling, this stuff comes up to the top of the pot mm -hmm. and you have to scrape the stuff off then so that you can have clear chicken soup. Yep, and that's, that's what it, it is. It really is like that. So, um, but, pe but sometimes people aren't ready for it. Some people, sometimes people don't want to stir the pot. But what's really fascinating with my guides is they know how much to stir it. If you go too deep, it can be too jarring for people. But if you only go layer by layer and go slowly, it allows the healing process to happen in a way which is it can be handled or tolerated by people. If you do too much too quickly, it's completely overwhelming. 
And yeah, and there's a lot of people who, when they start feeling the discomfort, start shutting down. Like they, they think they're ready. They mm-hmm. feel that they're ready, but on a soul level, they're not. And so when too much information comes in, instead of being able to assimilate it, it shuts down. And then they go, wait a minute, I didn't get a good, I didn't have a good experience. But really, it's not that they had a bad experience. It's just that there's only so much that you can eat. I mean, like the difference between a baby tummy and an adult tummy. Babies can only eat like ounces. Big tummies can eat way more. (laughs) Well, and also what happens too sometimes is people think they want it, but they don't really want to hear what you have to say. They, they want you to tell them what they want to hear, not what they need to hear. Exactly. But what I always tell people is it's like, you don't know me. You're showing up. You don't know me. Why would you listen to anything I had to say? Why would you give your power away to another human being? Don't do that. It's like, come to me. If it doesn't feel right, you don't accept it. But if it does feel right, you can ruminate on it and focus on it and see, you know what, I do see the value. And sometimes people can't see it because their their ego won't let them see it yet. And they're not ready to hear it. And it takes some time. So if you don't know what it's meaning, sometimes you read it months later and it's like, oh, now that's what it meant. Or you think that at this time it meant this thing. And then you look at it from the future and it's like, it meant this. Well, it meant both. And that's the benefit of actually having a written writing versus a verbal one. So what I do for people is I do the written reading and they get that and the light code is recorded. So they get that and the conversation is not. So that's free flowing, but they always have their outline to go back to. And really powerful. And what's great is when you read, read something, sometimes your brain doesn't keep, you know, doesn't bring it in can't Mm -hmm. understand it, but you have it to always go back to when you have something verbally or that you're taking notes, your brain filters. Mm -hmm. And so you only get sort of like those choice bits that you might want to hear, but really aren't going to be helpful for your growth or what you need to know. Yeah. What you attach to at that moment. Ah, she said this. And while your mind is focusing on that, you missed all the rest of what was said. Right. Exactly. So let's talk about crystalline light code. What is it and how does it activate? Okay. So this is something that my guides have given me and it's a slow process that was working in. And it was like, I started getting number sequences. I'm like, what are these number sequences? Then I started getting geometric shapes and patterns. And I'm like, what are these things and why are you giving them to me? And what they are is they're a geometric pattern that when you trace it, it and you activate it with a number sequence, it then activates the, um, the light code. So if you think about it, we're all light beings, all yes. of us. But what happens is we, you know, through life, our light dims, you know, you have this problem, you have that problem, and you get heavier and heavier. And sometimes we forget that we are beings of light. And the lighter you are, the more you attract lightness. The heavier you are, the more heaviness comes to you. It's almost that law of attraction. If you can stay in that light mind space, good things will continue. Um, So these, I could show you a sample here from, this is from my uh, Journey to Lemuria deck that I I created this with my uh, partner, Lisa Nomikos. But so what it is, if you can see this here, where's the camera? It's a light code. You could see that up on top and then the number, and then there's the words. So all of the codes are different. And I just write down the codes, like here's another one. You know, you could see they all come in differently. But what happened specifically during COVID is my guide said, you need to activate as many people as possible. So every person I did a reading for, I gave them a light code activation because we needed as a global to elevate all of us because we were all being drawn down this spiral with the heavy news that was constantly hitting us from all angles. So this is a way if you use them on a regular basis to help keep you in an elevated mind space so we don't get pulled down that negative spiral. And then my, you know, my partner, Lisa, she creates a light code activation from it that where she makes the image. It's called the activator image. And I keep mine on my phone. So oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So this is mine. And then that's the code. And so I could just look at it when I need a pick me up. Ah, there we go. I could look at it and say, feel better. 
you know? And so it's sort of, if you're familiar with Reiki, they're yes. like, they're like your personalized own Reiki symbol. Okay. You get. So it's just for you, but I also do like codes for all different topics. So, so let's say for you, Marla, and I know nothing about you and I'm not tapping in, but let's just say you need to overcome sadness. I could give you a code for overcoming sadness. If you need a code for self-worth, I could do self-worth. If you need a code for forgiveness, I could do a forgiveness. I have generalized codes like that, but I can also do personalized ones that kind of go deeper into your aspects. And then I do a verbal channel that goes with it. So while I'm doing the code, I, I'm actually sitting here and I'm actually moving and clearing your energy field, even though I'm not with you, while I'm verbally channeling giving you the message that you need to help to shift and activate your cells, to connect you back to source. And so, you know, you come in happy and you, it, it basically leads you to this space of lightness to reignite your happiness again, if that. I like that. And I think so many people do need it. Right now, yes. Right now more than ever. Yeah. And I, I'm Go ahead. I was just going to. Well, I'd love to share. Can I share something that when I'm on the airplane, I channel? Oh, well, I'll uh, tell you what. We've only got two minutes to the break. We're going to let's talk about something else real fast. And then when we come in on the break, we'll start with that. How's okay. that? Because it's All about right. the light codes, but sure. Yeah. And so, so tell me about the soul questions that you work with. If you can do that within two minutes, um, how you work I with clients like what are the soul questions well i briefly touched on that before so let's yes. say i have a session with you i do a i do your little mini reading and then i well if i'm working with life coaching i'll say well what does this person need so let's say again for you let's say you're having a forgiveness issue right mm -hmm. and so this will help guide you to understand how you could begin to forgive and then i will just ask and i will get random questions why don't you like peanut butter? When you're angry, what's the first thing you do? If you can't find, um, solve a problem, how do you work your way out of a problem? When you are in a hurry, how do you handle a situation when you're under stress? Like random questions just pop out. They're different for everybody. What, I, mean, I don't know if your guides needed you to have those for some reason, but those are just what came out of my, and I type them. So during session, you will answer them. And a lot of times, like I asked somebody the other day, like, you know, or one time I said, what do lemons mean? Oh, that reminds me of my grandmother. We used to always make lemonade and, you know, like, and so the grandmother connection was the key. So it leads you down a roadmap. And at the end, you look at all the answers and it empowers you because you answered your own questions. It's really, really powerful. But the questions are what are generated through me. The answers come from you. So your guides are guiding you with the questions to know because they know what you're going to answer. I love that because that's a perfect vision of partnership. Yes. You get the questions, the client answers them, and together you come up with whatever the client it's needs to know. It's about empowering, empowering you. I don't need the power. It's about empowering you to perfect. know that you're capable. Well, thank you for that. We'll be right back. We're going to come back with Lisa Gennady. Did I say that right? And yes, just a couple of minutes. It. Perfect. I think we're off the air, but I'm not sure, Matt. I'm not sure, but my husband said we were on the air the whole time during the sound check, just so you know. Oh, I know that. I always okay. do that. I'm very organic, so I don't yep. know if Matt's with me still or not. Still says we're recording, so. Oh, yeah, we're still recording. We're still live on Facebook. It doesn't <laughs> end. <laughs> okay. Now we're now we're off the audio part. And yeah, I keep it because otherwise it's it's too much to try and start the show and get well, on my Facebook. friend just says we're still on the air. I just got a text. Yeah, we it. are. We're gonna okay. stay when the audio goes on break, we continue talking. Okay. And by the way, I have to I do think I met you. We were at um there was some sort of psychic fair thing. Body Mind Spirit Expo? No, it wasn't Body Mind. It was um What's her oh, name? Um, D'Angelo? Was it at the D'Angelo place? In no, Christmas? no, no. It's it's in Wheeling. Wheeling. It was that that building and oh, the sisters. Oh, yeah. Um, what? Oh, I'm, I'm blanking. The sisters. The um, ones who do prime my body. Oh, they're Russian. Uh, Russian or Eastern? Oh, Osanka. Oh, Osanka. That's it. Yes, yes, yes. They were okay. doing some sort of event. You were there with the other Lisa. Yes. And 
because I'm trying to remember who I was there seeing, but there was a few, then there was um, the massage guy, Alec was there. Okay. I know I saw him there. That was so much fun. I love that show. I really and, enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, they're lovely people. They're mm -hmm. really lovely people that I met you briefly okay. at the time. We'll see how we yeah. all turn back again. Ask her a question if you'd like. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what I'd like to do at some point is I'd like to do a light code activation and share people so they can actually experience it and see what it feels like and have a better understanding. So if we do do it and people are driving, they can listen, but don't get don't too do deep. Don't do it. <laughs> don't close your eyes while don't you're driving. Don't close your eyes and don't like go deep in, but you can hear it like it's a, a story, you know. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we are coming back. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Thank you for sticking around. If you've just tuned in, I'm with Lisa Gennady. Lisa is a certified intuitive life coach and ERYT 500 Kundalini Hatha yoga teacher, channel, medium, Reiki master, co-creator of Goddess and Angelic Reiki certification, and quantum field of light Akashic clearing trainings. She has studied in the Himalayas, Himalayas and experienced experienced a life-changing rebirthing, meditating in caves, and ancient Buddhist monasteries of India. Welcome back, Lisa. Thank you. It's nice to be back. So when we were going on break, you wanted to t share something that you wrote on a plane about fireflies. Yes, and it's um, I did a solo journey across the United States last year um, because I couldn't see my family. I drove across country. My family lives in California to see my family. And this song kept coming on. You know when you plug in your phone and music randomly comes on, you don't know where it comes from? The same yes. song kept repeating, Firefly by Owl City. And when I was on the airplane going to California this time, um, this is what came and it really sort of explains light codes. So I wanted to share it. Um, I read it to my yoga class this morning and I'm like, wow, I need to share this online. So it says that fireflies are light codes in motion. They light the path for a brief moment and you need to see it to believe it. So if you glimpse the light, you believe that you can light up the dark. So in essence, they're a metaphor when things are darkest, you can find the spark of light within. It is there. You must sometimes just catch a glimpse to get a glimmer of hope. So next time you see a firefly, find the light within. It is there, although it might be only for a fleeting moment. It will come back. It is the blink. Blink to change what you see. When you blink, you can change and shift the frequency. I love that. That's beautiful. And it is so accurate. So, yeah. And so I've talked about that with my students today. It's like, you don't like what you're seeing, close your eyes and shift the slide. Change your attitude, close your eyes and say, nope, I'm going to look at the brighter side. You open your eyes and things can shift. And that's sort of what light codes do. They kind of just put a little spark in to help you move towards that space of grander happiness and greater happiness. So nice. I know you wanted to do a light code activation. So this might be a perfect segue into that. Oh, okay. Well, perfect. So what I will do, I have, uh, this is my, um, this is from the Journey to Lemuria deck. Okay. okay which and is your new deck. This is the new deck. And what's interesting about this is my father actually passed away four months ago and he was, you know, he was healthy ish. You know, he wasn't, it was sort of a surprise two weeks before he passed away. I channeled this deck. It just came in and I just wrote it. Like when I do these things, they come in and like, 15 minutes, it's done, you know? And the whole deck is about optimism. It's about shifting the way you look at it. So it was like a tool that I was gonna need to be able to help me to deal with the months that followed. And it really, it amazed me. Like, because again, as a channel, I just take the information and I look at it like a third party, like it's not myself if that. So it's like, oh, wow. So I'm gonna pull a card because I don't know. And we'll see what, you, what our 
listening audience needs today. Okay. Perfect. Aha. Uh -huh. And this is very apropos. So the card says, freeze the anger and warm to peace. I love that. It says, when we stall the anger vibration, we let in the sun to diffuse. The sun melts ice. Ice is anger. Water is peace. So allow the sun to melt the ice, the anger, and create water, peace. And this is what the code looks like. So you could see it up there. That's but what's very fascinating about this is I have been listening to, I'm not an astrologist, but I've been listening to a bunch of astrology things recently. There's some strange animal making sounds and the animal kingdom's always talking to me. So I'm curious what it is. Um, but there's a big undercurrent of anger right now in society. There is. And so it's not a surprise that this is the card I picked and the activation that we need, because what I keep hearing and what I keep getting is that we need to do whatever we can not to feed into the anger. We need to cut it down because what happens is you can have a little tiny thing that triggers you and it turns into a volcano. And it's really important in this astrological time we're in right now to try our best to curb it. So that's why I think this card came up today. So I'm going to activate it. It'll take like five minutes. We, that's we, fine. Yeah. Okay. That's I never good. know, but I'll tell them that's as much as I want. <laughs> okay. Um, so what I do is I basically just put my hand over the code. You can't trace it, but these are a little more complicated. I repeat the number code three times, and then I'm going to begin channeling. Okay, and whatever comes out, you'll see me moving and doing all sorts of stuff and we'll see how it goes. All right. Perfect. So here we go. Eight, five, six, two, one, five, one, eight, five, six, two, one, five, one, eight, five, six, two, one, five, one. Eight, five, six, two, one, five, one. So we are at a time in the process of the human race where there is much turbulence and anxiety and strife that is occurring all at once. There is separation and discord and people are pointing fingers you see. The blame game is happening so readily. We are at a space now where we have choices you see. Do we wanna follow that path or do we wanna shine the light and be? A guiding force that comes to a place of acceptance you see, sharing love and light and divinity. Or do we want to allow the negative vibrations that are circulating around to attach to us too and drag us down through the mud so we cannot be happy too? You see, you have come to this earth, all of you humans, you see, to have a experience and to connect with your individual identity. But what you all seem to forget is that you are still connected back to the one. And when you don't like another, it is you not liking you. So if you don't like another, what about you is hurting you too? So it is time for you to shift others attitude, the attitude towards others you see and see if you can mute this feeling of blame and guilt and come back to a space of community. At this point and at this time and space, can you erase your negative mind thoughts you see Forgive those that have harmed thee. You see, they are on a journey just like you are too. How many mistakes have you made and how many more will you go through? As you develop your soul and you move along your path, it is time for you to see that you can in the aftermath of this current time, shift the way you look at the world and unfurl a new way, a new way to be, a, a way of light and love and, and harmony. So how do you do this when you say, when negative thought patterns hit you each and every day? You begin again, dear child, you see. You begin again so you can shift your own destiny. You do not have to follow the path you've been on. You can change it if you have gone wrong. Because that was just your school, you see, your school of light to help you be a better human being this time around. You see, your soul has come here to learn the lessons. And now that you have found out this information, you see, you have the power to shift thee. Shift your energy, change your mind, change the way you look at things. And you will find that you can draw into your life that which you are looking for, you see, and not chase it away with your negativity. 
So we will leave that with you today on this day. It is time for you to mute the anger, embrace the peace, go with the flow so you can erase, you see, the negative thoughts that can potentially haunt me. If you wake up in the morning and you imagine the sun rising up and you become one with the sun, you see, you will become elevated and you will become happy. As you move through your day when troubles come, take a deep breath and allow them to run the other direction you see. You say, I am not going to let you take hold of me this day. I'm going to maintain my positivity as I move on my way. And take a deep inhale. And exhale. And you can slowly open your eyes. That was amazing. That's great information. And it, I would agree with you that all who are listening needed to hear this. It's yeah. never an accident. No, everybody who needs to be on or listens to the recording, they come and they hear exactly what they need from who. Every person in our life as we move through is a messenger. So what people say somehow, even if it's just you wake up and the first words you hear on your alarm clock, you needed to hear that that morning. It sets the stage for things that you need to learn about process to help you grow. It is. So. It's so true. It, it's truly inspirational. But speaking of inspiration, let's talk about a, some inspiring story that you, that you have for of us that you experienced with a client or yourself? Inspirational story. Um, God, you have to give me a minute. When I do the light codes, I get a little, <laughs> uh, a little, little bit spacey. I mean, God, I have so many, so they, I have an iPad full of them. Um, and I really wasn't like preparing one in special. Um, Whatever one pops up. You know what? Could you ask me a different question? Once they get grounded, that will come because I'm telling you, I'm still flying. I should have had you ask me that beforehand. <laughs> okay. So I'll hold all stories till the end. Yes. Um, I need to come back down to this earth plane here. So let's talk about your mediumship and your channeling. When did you realize, like, what was the experience when you had your either first medium experience or channeling experience, which could be the same? Okay, well, the first verbal channeling, because I always knew that, well, I didn't always know. I actually began channeling December 31st of 2015. That's that day I told you, boom, it just, and then the floodgates opened. And after the floodgates opened, um, I was leading a retreat. I sat down and all of a sudden I started writing all these cards. I'm like, why am I writing these when I have a retreat to plan for? And, you know, I created this little deck. It's, I don't know if you could see it, but it's called the Soul Reflection Deck. And the art is done by my partner, um, Lisa Nomikos. This thing came out. I, I had only been channeling for like five weeks and I wrote an entire deck of cards in an hour. Wow. And this deck is a guide to life. You begin at one, which is numbers, which is frequencies, and you end at finality. And everything along the way is a roadmap. So I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. Because again, I say that as a third party, because even though I write it, I'm not writing it. Okay. Right. And so then about, um, whatever, about four weeks, three weeks after I started channeling, I went to Sedona and um, with my husband, I was just going on vacation. And my guide said, you need to find the Mount of the Swirls. So I'm walking around Sedona saying, excuse me, do you know where the Mount of the Swirls is? Because I couldn't find it on Google and nobody knew what I was talking about, but they told me I needed to go there. And then it hit me. It was Bell Rock, because if you look at the Bell Rock vortex from up above, it literally looks like a bunch of mud that's kind of come down and is all like swirly. And so I'm there with my husband. I'm marching through. I even lost a scarf and I sit down and I started channeling. And I've never done that before. I never verbally channeled. So he actually started recording me because he didn't know what I was doing. You know, this was new. I used to be a Wall Street trainer and now trader, and now I'm doing all this crazy stuff. And in it, it basically said that, you know, it said, save the world with a smile. It said, smile now. And there was more to it. It said that I was of the strong and I would make others strong. And it said, smile now, smile often, smile now, smile often, save the world with a smile. And so, 
it was like, wow, you know, like I was guided. I stopped at this place and that's what I got in that high vibrational spot. So it's like when you hear yourself being guided, assuming it's positive things, you never want to listen to dark voices, right. you know, listen, because the universe guides you if you're willing to listen. You know, that's another true. story they told me, they told me I needed to go to seven different places. And I didn't even realize that I had been doing it. One of them was Sedona. One of them was Lake Shasta, not Mount Shasta. Um, and I'm actually going back the fifth time that place calls me back. Peru, Greece, Bali, India. And the final place I need to go is Ethiopia. Oh, interesting. So I have done all of them except Peru. And, but, and Ethiopia, I knew nothing about Ethiopia and had an Ethiopian girl on my last retreat. And it is an incredibly spiritual place with pyramids and lots of history. The Ark of the Covenant, all of that is there. And I never knew. So at some point I'm going to go there because I was guided there, but I listened, you know, if you don't listen, they right. told me I needed to go to Lake Shasta to prove to my husband about my guides. So we went there. They said, go out at midnight. I go out on the dock at midnight with my husband and my daughter and we're like, and they said, we will show ourselves to you. And I'm like, okay. So I'm looking around, where are you? You know, not knowing how they would show up. I started what? taking pictures of the moon and I looked down into the reflections in the water and you could see all these faces and all these guides. And I was able to show them to my husband. I said, here they are. So it was a way to get my husband to believe in me because I was always this Wall Street trader and now I'm speaking to spirit and it's a bit of a change and it's not easy for the people in your life to deal with. It's when a you're huge dichotomy. So, so yeah, so that was, that was like a really cool story and there's so many of them in my development, you know, that. Well, I have goosebumps all over from that story. And that was a question I was going to ask is how your husband, you know, if he was spiritual to begin with, and how his transition into understanding and being open to what you do happened because I have this, I have a similar issue and I had a feeling yours didn't start out down the, down the path. I was his customer. I used to trade options through him and I would scream and yell at him on the phone. And, you know, he thought <laughs> I was really tough and then he fell in love with me, but no, it was a transition, <clears throat> but he is an amazing human being. He's very open-minded. And he, at first he's like, stop it. We don't need to do this. But then he saw how much I was helping people. He saw how people kept coming back and coming back and coming back. And I wasn't even promoting myself. He saw the changes that I was making in the clients. You know, he even knows their names. It's like, oh yeah, so-and-so is calling, you know, that kind of thing. So it's sort of like when he, he could see through the eyes of others, the benefits that I'm doing, it made him believe in me more. And Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, no. And it's, it takes a really amazing, strong person to be able to do that because I do know a lot of people when you've had such a change, like I have, and it sounds like you have, yes. it could be enough to destroy a marriage. It could be enough to break up relationships. This spiritual path isn't an easy path. When you say yes, you dedicate yourself to something higher than you. It's you become a servant to something stronger. And sometimes, you know, we kind of take the back burner and have to remember we have to say, hey, I got to pause and remember my human existence as more, well and not just my spiritual existence. That's true. Hang on. We'll be right back. We need to take another break. We'll be back with Lisa Gennady uh, after the break. Stay tuned. All right, good. All clear. Thanks. No, it, my, it, my, my husband was the same way. When we first started dating and I started talking about energy healing and he goes, I don't believe in all that. I'm an engineer. And if it's not scientific and replicatable, I don't believe in it. Well, a dozen years later, he sings a different song. And, you know, he's very much supportive of what I do. And not only that, he also, let's say, inquires as to what I get for him, you know, when he has a question, when he's at a crossroads. Mm -hmm. So I'm like his spiritual advisor as well. Well, it's interesting because I have, you know, um, clients will ask me for advice on things and I try not to give them the answers. I guide them to come up with their own answers because it really is about empowering people. I teach people how to become intuitive. And if I give you all the answers, then how are you ever going to connect to your own intuition? So my job is to help to empower others. Which is true. Yeah. As my husband, as my husband, we just, 
you know, he's, he's highly psychic and it's sort of like, he's got the answers. I don't have to give it to him. He knows, but it's almost like confirmation. Like, are you seeing what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like that Christmas song. Do you see what I see? <laughs> da, 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 da. You know, it's that kind of um, connection for us. Mm -hmm. But the point is the transition from being a naysayer to, oh my God, she does amazing things, you know, has occurred. The ship. But it takes time because at first they don't get it, you right. know, and, but that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't get it, you know, I mean, it's like, if it wasn't happening to me, I wouldn't believe it. Like, I still can't believe I can do what I do. Right. You know, it's like, but it's like second nature. It just comes, but it's hard. It's hard sometimes because how could I possibly know things about people I don't know? What you do? All right, so, come back here in about 12 seconds. Perfect, thank you. Tom. You are listening to Guided Spirit Conversations. To reach Marla Goldberg or her guest today, you're invited to call into the program at 1-888-346-9141. That's 1-888-346-9141. If you'd rather send an email, the address is guidedspiritconversations at gmail.com. Now, back to this week's program. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, I'm with Lisa Gennady. And Lisa has a plethora of tools in her toolbox. So please check out her website at Lisa, and I'm going to spell her last name, G-N-I-A-D-Y dot com, where you can read all about Lisa, all about all of the ways she can work with you and help you shift, transform, enhance your life circumstances, whatever it is you need you'll find something that Lisa does that can help you with it. Um, yeah, welcome back, Lisa. You're welcome. You know, I wanted to share one thing. My husband Wait, before does... we go into that, I'm so sorry. But before we go into that, it's yeah. charity shout out time. So we do oh. our charity. And yours is um, St. Jude, which is a beautiful charity. I used to live in Memphis and got very acquainted with St. Jude then. So let's talk about why St. Jude and how you can, you know, why people should help. You know, it's interesting because when Bridget asked me, who do you want? I didn't even hesitate because my father just passed away and he had said that he wanted to, you know, instead of, you know, instead of people sending flowers, he wanted people to donate to send to St. Jude. Yeah. So I did it honestly in, in honor of my father, but I also, I've been, you know, I've been teaching yoga for a number of years and I used to teach a lot of kids yoga, Girl Scout yoga. And I had one little, one little girl who had cancer you know, and, you know, and, and when you see what these children go through and the, the strength that like they are stronger than any adult, but, but the things that they have to, to go through. And I yeah. just think it's a, a fantastic charity and a worthwhile cause for everybody to donate to. I agree. And it's stjude.org and anybody, anybody, any child who has to go there, they're, they're in their parents, their families, they put them up, they, they take care of the travel expenses. It's a, such a worthwhile cause. And when Danny Thomas started it, you know, he prayed to give back. And this is how he did it through St. Jude. And St. Jude has helped, oh, probably, if not tens of hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, children, be able to live a life they might not otherwise be able to live. So please check out St. Jude. So we were going back to Lisa and you were talking about your husband. Yeah, he just texted me and he said, um, you know, something, you know, I do intuitive readings and I do Akashic record readings and light codes, but I'm also a healer. And um, that just comes through in the energy work but through the words I clear. Just by hearing the words, it's clearing a layer to help you move towards healing. Yes. But my mother-in-law, who um, was 99 at the time, came down with COVID. And, you know, they allowed us in and we went to visit her all in our hazmat suits and everything. And, um, you know, we didn't think she was going to make it. And I sat there and I did major energy work on her. And I just said, if it's meant for her to get through this, she'll get through this. The next day she started eating. 
So was it the energy work I did? Was it her seeing us, you know, that gave her the hope because she hadn't seen us in so long because of COVID? Well, she made it through COVID. She made it through congestive heart failure about um, three weeks later. And she, this was a few months ago and uh, this weekend she had her 100th birthday. That's a beautiful story. So it's like, you know, everybody wants to go to an intuitive or a psychic because like a lot of times they're just looking for like, am I going to win the lottery? Should I marry this man? That's not what I do. I really work with people towards helping them heal, heal their emotions. Because when you are suffering, those settle in and you come down with disease. That's what disease is all about. So if we can clear that stuff, we can prevent it from coming into physical form to begin with. Yes. So let's clear it in the energy world. So you don't wind up, you know, coming down with any kind of um, physical thing. I am not a medical intuitive, even though I do have those capabilities, I won't do it. I don't want that responsibility. Um, but if I could do whatever I can to help people, that's what I do. You know, that's a vehicle of healing for the world. It is true. We've got a caller, Deb from Nebraska is waiting for us to answer. So welcome, Hi, Deb. Deb. Hi, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed your call today. I have a quick question about, I've recently gone through a spiritual awakening and I'm trying to figure out how to contact my spirit guides and I haven't been able to achieve that yet. Could you give me some direction on how to do this? Okay, so is that question for me or for you, Marla, or both? Why don't you take it? Because you're the guest. Okay, I wasn't sure. All right, so... Yeah, the first thing about um, stop trying is the first message because it's, it's not trying, it's allowing. They communicate with you all the time. Messages are around you all the time. It's just a matter of being perceptive and noticing it. Um, animals may come into your path. So you might be thinking something and then a rabbit will go by. Google in the spiritual meaning of rabbit. It'll tell you it's about fertility, creativity, or whatever. You know, speak in your mind to your higher self and you will turn around and you will begin to hear messages back. And even if you don't hear anything, they'll show up in signs around you. Most of my friends, we do the license plate game um, and you see messages in your license plate. If you want to figure out who your actual guides are, ask. You, I mean, and then write down what comes. I mean, everybody, it's all energy. So they just attach and give different names. Like I speak to three different sets of guides, but I'm a medium, so I can talk to anybody. Any person who's passed, any famous person, I can channel them. But are they my, my specific guides? No. But I can tell you that my guides told me, um, I speak to my first set was called the Friends of Humanity. And they said, anybody can call upon us. All you have to do is ask, believe, say please, say thank you, and be doing it for the best and highest good and not for power. So if you don't know who your own guides are, call upon the Friends of, the Man of Humanity. They're called the FOH. And they'll be there to help. You just have to believe. And always protect yourself you. because you would be surprised how many things on the other side aren't necessarily of the light. So always call in light beings. Okay. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't hear you. You what? I said, always call in beings of light. Just because they speak to you does not mean they're beings of light. Okay. That's true. And I'm just going to add to that and say the message I heard was patience. Um, I'm feeling that you, you, you get a little impatient because you don't know what you're supposed to be receiving. So you, you sort of, you know, cut it short or say, I didn't get anything when in actuality you really are getting things. So a friend of mine says this, and I believe it when you trust, allow, and then surrender, you'll receive. Thank you. You know, it's funny you say that about the animals because I've been asking for, signs from the universe and two days ago I asked to see a dragonfly as a symbol of that I'm on the right path and that evening I live in the country and that evening I went outside and just sat in the nature of the beautiful countryside and probably a hundred dragonflies appeared <laughs> in my front yard and okay. they, wow. I swear to god I I about fell over I, I called my son. I said, Graham, come over here and look at this. You won't believe it. And he goes, I know I saw him, Mom. Isn't that weird? 
And it's, it's not weird. That's the way the universe answers when you trust. So. Exactly. And I asked to see a rabbit. And two weeks ago, a rabbit came up to my patio door and was looking in my window in my bedroom. And I, I took a picture of it because I about fell off my bed. I was like, oh, my gosh. I asked okay. to see a rabbit an hour ago. All right. So I'm going to embellish upon that. So what did I say to you that your guides are talking to you all the time? And what did I pick? I picked a rabbit. How did I know that a rabbit, that's your guides giving you confirmation through me that you are on the right path and to just keep listening and trusting and it will continue to evolve. You don't want it to happen too quickly because if it happens too much, you get overload and you can't handle it. It has to be a slow process, you know, and, and just trust and everything is a little mini miracle. It's like, oh, wow, I, the dragonflies, they all showed up. Write them down. Keep a list of your mini miracles and you'll start saying, wow, look at what has come into my life. This whole new magic, this whole new excitement of how you move through life when you step into this path. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a wonderful day, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. For calling oh, in. Thanks for calling in, Deb. So we have to wind up the show. I can't believe the show is over already. It's been wonderful having you, Lisa. Please check out Lisa Gennady, G-N-I-A-D-Y dot com to learn about what she does, how she can help you. And Lisa, it's been such a pleasure. Can Thank I mention so one last thing? I just sure. want to say, Quickly. if anybody's looking to travel and learn more about this, I lead women's retreats and men too. And I have a few coming up. So if anybody wants to look into that on my website, it's a way to supercharge your practice. So turn, to, turn into Lisa. You won't be disappointed. It's a beautiful website. Mm. So, and I also want to thank Voice America, everyone at Voice America for tuning in for all that they do to get the show up and running and on the air. I want to say thank you to my assistant, Bridget, my left hand, my right hand. So grateful for you each and every day. Uh, you are such a savior for me. Um, I want to thank you, the listening audience for taking the time to participate in this show, whether you're listening to it in an audio, whether you're watching the live stream, so grateful for you taking the time out of your life to participate. And I hope that you get what you need from each and every episode. And speaking of each and every episode, please tune into my YouTube page, uh, Guided Spirit Conversations to watch all the archived episodes so you can catch up on any episodes you might have missed, like, subscribe, so you don't miss a single episode. And check out my website at Marla Goldberg. Goldberg has two Rs.com to see what I do, how I can work with you and help you. Now, until the next time, as always, I send you love, I send you blessings, and I send you gratitude. If you haven't heard these words today, I love you. And I am so grateful that you are in my life in whatever capacity you're in it. And until the next time, stay well, stay joyful, and be grateful. Take care. Thank you, Marla. Thank you.